Police say they found the car of gun and drug accused Anya Wilmot, but there's still no sign of the woman who failed to show up for the continuation of her trial last week. Superintendent Stephen Dean, head of the National Crime Prevention Office, told ZNS News today that Wilmot's vehicle was found in the Prince Charles area yesterday. They say the car was in good condition and didn't offer much in the way of clues about what may have happened to Wilmot. The 22-year-old was due to appear in court last week Tuesday, but never showed up. Police say as far as they know, she hasn't been heard from. They say they're still treating the case as a priority matter. Police have arrested two men and a woman in connection with Saturday's holdup of Burger King's Tonic Williams Darling Highway restaurant. Police engaged in a high-speed chase with the suspects in a gunfire exchange, and one of the suspects ended up being injured. We'll have more on that tomorrow. Bahamian women diagnosed with cervical cancer and those susceptible to getting it will soon have more of a fighting chance of beating the odds. This according to the Minister of Health, Dr. Hubert Minnis, who says the HPV vaccine will soon be introduced locally. The vaccine, he says, is being introduced globally and once protocols are completed, it will be available here in the Bahamas. HPV has just recently come in. We're not, we're not using it now. Um, we're putting the protocol and policies in place for that so that that can be introduced. We see about 45 cases of um, um, cancer um, cervix um, annually, and therefore it will be very significant in terms of preventing that. Well, speaking with stakeholders in the medical profession during a recent forum, Dr. Minnis also advised more widespread coverage of the influenza vaccine, a position with which Deputy Chief Medical Officer at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Delon Brennan, agrees. We also want the community to know that um, the influenza vaccine that we've been giving for some time should be um, given to not just a select group, but to, to um, the population at large. Um, we speak about um, um, flu, um, where you have about half a million people dying every year from flu. And if we have the vaccine, um, we in the Bahamas certainly would not want to fall within that mortality or morbidity category. And it's essential that our population understand that a lot of illnesses, disease and deaths we can prevent. And um, I think the health is um, in the forefront of prevention, pushing prevention. And I think most um, other entities, be it crime, etc., should likewise um, be like health, pushing prevention. I think the prevention is, is um, cure for most problems that we face. What we found is the general public, the healthy public, is a reservoir for those diseases and they're passing it on to the rest of the public that may be susceptible but aren't able to get the vaccine. So we need to revamp our activities so that everyone is protected so not only do they not get the disease but they also can't pass it on to someone else. It's official. The Progressive Liberal Party headquarters, Gambier House, is now known as the Sir Lyndon Pindling Center. A renaming ceremony took place on Sunday evening. Our Cyan Thompson was there. Progressive Liberal Party, as they officially renamed the party's headquarters on Farrington Road in honor of their late leader and the man known as the father of the modern Bahamas, former Prime Minister Sir Lyndon Pindling. Party officials, members of parliament, candidates and supporters looked on as his widow, Dame Marguerite Pindling, and widow of George Mackey, former longtime PLP convention chairman, Mrs. Elizabeth Mackey, both unveiled the new sign labeled Sir Lyndon Pindling Center. Party leader, the Right Honorable Perry Christie. The challenge that faces us now is to bind ourselves in unity and common purpose so that we can perpetuate that great and noble tradition of service that Sir Lyndon gave so much power and meaning to during his years of service in our country. He continues to stand as a towering light on the landscape of our collective memory. Let us therefore resolve to move even closer to that light so that we too can leave our nation in a better position than what we met it in. Deputy Leader Philip Brave Davis also saluting the father of the nation and remembering his tireless work in building a new Bahamas. Sir Lyndon had an uncanny belief he had an uncanny, dedicated, committed belief in Bahamians and the Bahamian talents. Yes. And I was a beneficiary of that belief 
on a number of occasions. In life, he loomed large. In death, he continues to loom large. May his soul continue to rest in peace, and we will be always remember our surrender. Longtime friend and colleague, former Deputy Prime Minister and former Governor General, the Honorable Arthur Hanna, reminisced on the struggles he and Sir Lyndon went through to build the country. And eventually, of course, he was able to convince the Bahamian people and we moved on to independence. So, Piddling did, as I said, Piddling did a lot. That's right. He did more than that. It was the late George Mackey, the PLP party's historian, who recommended that the party's headquarters be renamed after the late national hero who died in the year 2000. Cyan Thompson, ZNS News. Welcome to tonight's edition of the Business Beat, sponsored by Royal Fidelity. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Aldebiz Munnings. Let's take a look at what's making business news today. Chairman of Kersner International, Sir Saul Kersner, refuting claims that his Paradise Island Resort is now being managed by a major hedge fund company. At a press conference today, Sir Saul maintained that the Canadian-based Brookfield Company is a high investment conglomerate that is over 100 years old with $159 billion in assets and employs 18,000 individuals. He's pleased to partner with the company to maintain the Kersner brand here in the Bahamas. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs announcing that the Bahamas was successful in its bid for election to the Council of the International Maritime Organization under Category C at the 27th session of the IMO Assembly in London last week. Category C is open to those 20 states which have special interests in maritime transport or navigation and whose election to the Council will ensure the representation of all major geographic areas of the world. Bahamas High Commissioner and Permanent Representative to the IMO, His Excellency Paul Farquharson, headed a Bahamian delegation to the IMO Assembly. Well, get ready for Bahamas Business Outlook 2012. Known as one of the oldest and most respected events on the business sector calendar, the event is set for January 12, 2012 at the Wyndham Nassau Resort in Cable Beach. Under the theme, Vision Beyond Sight, How Ready is the Bahamas to Do 21st Century Business? The one-day conference will be marking its 21st year with a customary forecast of the Bahamas' economic performance for the new year. The international business scene, American Airlines' parent AMR, one of the few major U.S. airlines to avoid bankruptcy, finally succumbed Tuesday and filed for Chapter 11. Airline officials claim the airline was forced into bankruptcy because of cost disadvantages it faced compared to rivals that had already gone through bankruptcies. And in regional business, Haitian President Michel Martelet and Inter-American Development Bank President Luis Alberto Moreno took part in a ceremony on Monday marking the completion of the rehabilitation of a key stretch of Route Nationale 1. That's one of Haiti's principal highways. The IDB, Haiti's leading multilateral donor, provided $70 million for the rehabilitation of a 50-mile stretch between Port-au-Prince and the city of St. Mark. Remember, you can send us an email or join us on www.zns.com bahamas.com or become our friend on ZNS's official Facebook page. And we want to thank you for watching tonight's edition of The Business Beat, sponsored by Royal Fidelity. I'm Altavis Munnings. The American Heart Association changed the way we perform CPR last year, and experts maintain this is definitely the way to go. Now it's CAB. Compressions come first. Only then do we focus on airway and breathing. The only exception to the rule will be newborn babies. But everyone else, whether it's infant CPR, child CPR, or adult CPR, will get chest compressions before you worry about the airway. You should call 911 or 919 the moment you realize the victim won't wake up and doesn't seem to be breathing right. How deep you should push on the chest has also changed for adult CPR. Now the Heart Association wants you to push at least two inches deep on the chest. Push a little faster too, at least 100 compressions per minute. At that rate, 30 compressions should take you 18 seconds. The American Heart Association still wants untrained lay rescuers to do hands-only CPR on adult victims who collapse in front of them. 
do hands only CPR because doing something is always better than doing nothing. CPR is the only treatment for sudden cardiac arrest and the AHA wants you to notice when it happens. Don't stop pushing. Remember, every interruption in chest compressions interrupts blood flow to the brain, which leads to brain death if the blood stops flowing for too long. It takes several chest compressions to get blood moving again, so you should keep pushing for as long as you can. When it's time to do mouth to mouth, do it quick and get right back on the chest. To register for CPR classes, call the Doctors Hospital Community Training Center at 302-4722 and learn to save a life today.